Well, um, I do not claim, uh, you know, um, that I have the absolute truth, uh, but um, there are certain facts. Um, for example, about um, human rights situation in Azerbaijan. I mean, people are arrested in Azerbaijan for expressing their opinion, which is again different from uh, from government's opinion uh, on you know situation in Azerbaijan. And those people who are criticizing the government uh, on various policies, uh, they are ending up in jail. Um, we have around 100 political prisoners. We have the leading human rights defenders, uh, journalists, activists in jail. So, for example, just telling that there are political prisoners in Azerbaijan because all these people um, have been jailed on bogus charges, uh, like the leading investigative journalist Khadija Ismail, who uncovered uh, several cases where president and his family uh, own offshore companies and through those offshore companies uh, act actually own secretly or they were owning secretly not anymore it's not a secret thanks to Khadija and, and brave journalists like Khadija they own uh, various chunks of uh, economy of Azerbaijan so um, Khadija has been jailed recently and she faces uh, absurd charges, uh, including charges on tax evasion. Exactly the charge, actually, that you know, president and his family members could be charged with uh, in any in any state where you would have a rule of law and independent judiciary. I was in jail myself twice, and when I was first time in jail, there was. Um, the, 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 they put me in jail as a hooligan, and the the the, the court decided. Uh, they claimed, and then the court decided that I have beaten up uh, two sportsmen who were three times bigger than me. President Aliyev stands next to the Secretary General of NATO in Brussels, which happened several months ago. And to the answering the question, if there are any political prisoners in Azerbaijan, he says, of course, there are no political prisoners in Azerbaijan. And it's not just what I'm saying. This is also uh, the Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly in January 2013. The majority of European politicians, also Western politicians, uh, who are members of Parliamentary Assembly, MPs, they voted down the resolution which... Uh, tried to raise the issue of political prisoners in Azerbaijan. Um, and, and that's very sad because when Azerbaijan entered the Council of Europe, you know, we hope that as, uh, Europe, Europe, Council of Europe will, will contribute to democratization and liberalization in Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan has paid... Um, uh, and citizens of Azerbaijan uh, paid $8 billion for the spectacle that you will watch. I will not watch it. So um, for me, these games are waste of public money. It's white elephant project. You know, just uh, today, yesterday, we read the news that Holland um, refused to, to host the second European Games because... There were 50 or 60 million euros cost for Holland to host those games. And unfortunately, we spent 8 billion on this. And this is um, not PR for the country. Uh, if you look um, media reports now, international media, I mean, I gave already about 30 interviews. And, and in, in almost in, in many interviews, what you see is basically critical coverage of the, the fact that there are a lot of people in prisons. And now more and more news emerge that many journalists or some journalists have not been allowed, international journalists now, have not been allowed to come to Azerbaijan or their, uh, their application to uh, Azerbaijan embassies abroad have been ignored. I asked and I appealed to journalists uh, to, to, to athletes, to 6,000 European athletes, that they can actually 
turn this uh, family PR of Aliyev family into something else, into real celebration of, uh, you know, Olympic spirit of freedom and inclusion if those European athletes could visit families of political prisoners, could took pict take pictures with mothers, fathers, children of those political prisoners left behind, put it on their Facebook and Twitters and share this and, and support the, uh, the, the, the appeal that all political prisoners in Azerbaijan uh, should be freed. And even, even if it's against the rules, to, to do some individual protests at sporting event itself, uh, because that could really uh, capture imagination of world media that could turn upside down the all intentions, you know, of a leave family. This is um, a very difficult topic because uh, what happened on Azerbaijan, um, real politic took over in the attitude of uh, many European governments um, and of EU Commission especially. Uh, it is especially a big shame what EU Commission did in 2014 and even now in the middle of the... Because last year in 2014, 60 NGOs have been shut down in Azerbaijan, lost independent NGOs. Their bank, uh, uh, bank accounts have been frozen, their leaders have been jailed. And EU Commission didn't do anything. They didn't, uh, they didn't make any call uh, you know, for support of civil society in Azerbaijan. It just went silent. They accepted almost in absolute silence what was happening in Azerbaijan. And now, for example, EU Commission makes calls to support civil society institutions in Azerbaijan. But even from design of those calls, I can tell you that they are aiming at su uh, supporting financially uh, NGOs that government created, uh, you know, to pretend that we have NGOs. So it's a big shame what EU Commission does right now. Well, just to illustrate you the tragedy, um, the problem is that we, we were applying for, for example, uh, assistance of uh, German Minister of Foreign Affairs for our project. You know, it is in Berlin. Uh, four years in a row, we were trying to get the support. And this year, we received again rejection of our application uh, to do investigative uh, reporting in Azerbaijan. And uh, the, the rejection, one sentence in that rejection was, in my opinion, shows you the entire cynicism of uh, European governments and institutions, uh, most of them, uh, in its design of their policy towards Azerbaijan. The rejection sentence was, there was one sentence there, that your project is not in line with human rights policy of German government in Azerbaijan. That's how they reject our application. And um, when the question is, what, what can be done about this? Well, I think they should be named, they should be shamed. And, and I think that the more people we can mobilize within those countries, the more we can talk to media about it, about their real politic, ugly, uh, real politic approach, and about the fact, that, like there was, th this is the sentence I will finish this. Uh, uh, yesterday at event in Berlin, this German MP asked me, but what do you suggest? Do you suggest we should have no dialogue with this government? Do you suggest that, you know, we shouldn't engage them? And I said, no, please engage them more, trade more, do more business, talk even more to them. But when you say we have a dialogue with Azerbaijan, have more dialogue, but don't restrict this dialogue just to president and ministers and, and, you know, and to business elite, because this is what European governments and EU Commission does, and then they call it dialogue with Azerbaijan. I, I told him, you know, go and do dialogue with families of political prisoners. Go and do dialogue with activists, with opposition leaders who are still not jailed, with civil society leaders and activists who are still not jailed. Why I don't see the pictures of European politicians you know, government representatives coming to Azerbaijan. When they go to Georgia or Ukraine, they meet opposition, government, civil society leaders. When they come to Azerbaijan, they meet only president and only ministers and only uh, business community. So 
when when I'm talking about engagement and dialogue, I'm I'm not saying that don't talk with government. I'm saying don't let government to silence you. Don't let government, you know, to come to Azerbaijan and just talk, uh, you know, to them. Because Azerbaijan is much, much bigger than just criminal President Aliyev, you know, and his gang. 